What's going on traders? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about stop losses not getting triggered. Have you ever been in a position, you put in a stop loss, the stock then drops to your stop loss or goes below it and it does not fill you or it does not trigger an actual sale order and then you end up getting filled at a lower price? Well, in this video, I'm here to explain why that happens and maybe even kind of how you can avoid that. So let's go ahead and get started. What we're looking at is the stock SNCA. The reason I picked the stock is because the move that the stock is about to make is so big and so crazy that everybody should be able to grasp exactly why your stop losses do not get triggered sometimes. Now, this is not going to be the typical scenario or situation you will most likely find yourself in on a day-to-day -day basis. This move that you're about to see is pretty outrageous and typically does not happen very often. But since this move you're about to see is so crazy to the downside, it really will emphasize exactly why you may run into a situation where your stop loss does not get triggered. So in a few seconds here, you're going to see the stock pretty much just tank from about $4 all the way down to like $1.75 or something. Just a crazy, crazy move down. Before that happens, let me start to explain why your stop losses do not get triggered. See, when you enter a stop loss, what you're basically doing is putting in a price point where you are asking somebody else to purchase shares from you. Remember that when you put in a stop loss, it does not guarantee that you are going to get filled at the price you entered the stop loss in. The stop loss really is just an order that goes to the market that says this person would like to exit their position if the stock does reach this price but does not guarantee a fill at this price. See, what you have to remember is when it comes to the stock market, Everything is done on a transaction basis. If I buy shares, somebody sold them to me. If you sell shares, somebody is going to be buying from you. Now, just because you're selling shares does not mean that somebody wants to purchase them from you at the price you're trying to sell them at. The same situation when you go to buy a car from somebody off of Craigslist. You can go with an idea of buying it or selling your car at a certain price, but there's no guarantee that the person you're meeting up with will sell you their car at that price, or there's no guarantee that you're going to be able to purchase the car at the price you would like to. So as you can see, SNCA is starting to come down a little bit. The stock is getting ready to just start tanking. You will see here in just a second. As it starts coming crashing down, what's happening is everybody is going to start panic selling out. A panic sell is when everybody starts hitting the sell button all at once. Remember, if you're all trying to sell at the same time, there's a strong chance that you will not get filled. So if you had stop loss orders in on the stock, maybe around some of these levels, it's very possible that your order did not get filled at any one of these white lines. If you had put your stop loss below these support levels, you know, just said that this was support and you put your stop loss in there, it might not have got filled at 360, it might got filled down here at 350. And why is that the case? Because just because you put a stop loss in at 360 does not mean that somebody is willing to buy those shares from you at that current moment in time when the price gets to 360. Remember that when you buy, there's somebody selling. And when you sell, there's somebody buying. But just because you're selling does not mean somebody wants to buy what you're selling at the price you're trying to sell it for. Now I know you're gonna say, well, Connor, if there's somebody buying when I'm selling and there's somebody selling when I'm buying, how is it that I'm not getting filled at these you know, prices? Well, let me help you understand this. In the market, there's really two players, so to speak. You have the market makers, and you just have regular people like me and you. The market makers are the ones that create and control the spread in between the bid and the ask. And again, this is a replay, so you're gonna see that the level two is a little awkward right now. 
but the spread is controlled and made by the market makers, which means more often times than not, whomever is on the bid on the top where my cursor is at and whomever is on the top on the ask where my cursor is at, 90% of the time is a market maker. It is not some other trader. Just because you're not doing a market order or a market sell does not mean that the market maker is not participating. If you do a limit order, that does not mean that you're purchasing from some other individual trader. 90% of the time, your limit order is getting filled or selling to a market maker. It could be going to an individual trader. You don't really know for sure, but 90% of the time, your market orders and your limit orders and your stop loss orders are getting filled or executed through a market maker. Understand that. So, why is your stop, not, stop loss not getting filled at the price you want it to get filled at? Because if this thing starts crashing like crazy and everybody's selling, why would I buy what you're selling knowing that there's way more sellers coming and the prices will probably go much, much lower? There's a stampede of sellers rolling in. Your stop loss is at 360. The price gets to 360. You get filled down here at 350. But why? My stop loss was here. Well, because as the price came down to your stop loss, there was so much selling pressure that there was not enough buyers at that moment in time to take the shares that you were trying to sell. And your stop loss is saying, hey, if prices reach this stock, or sorry, if prices, if the stock reaches this price, I would like to put in a market sell. That's what a stop loss is. It's a sell to the market, a market out of your position I'm stopping out. And what that's going to do is it's basically going to trigger a market sell. And if the market makers are not willing to buy at 360, you're going to get filled at 350. If they're not willing to buy at 350, you're going to get filled at 320, et cetera, et cetera. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is really just the gist of why you may not be getting filled at the prices you desire on your stop losses. Because it's very possible nobody wants to buy what you're selling at that current price at that current moment in time. So I hope you guys learned a little bit from this video. I know it's pretty quick. If you guys have any questions, feel free to put it in the comment section below. Give the video a thumbs up so we can spread this video all around YouTube. The YouTube algorithm loves those thumbs up. So go ahead and do that for me and I'll keep making these good videos for you guys each and every day in the market. Thanks once again for tuning in and I'll see you guys on the next one.